So here is our physical observation. For the bottle without yeast, all we can observe is the collected droplets on the sides of the bottle. This is because of the remaining warmth of the water. Its molecules began to move rapidly, turning some of it into its gas phase, steam. So for the second bottle, we put yeast in warm sugar water and carbon dioxide comes out. You see, we need the warm water for the yeast as this reactivates it and wakes it up. Then it begins to eat and multiply. As such, the yeast is able to feed off the sugars and convert them into carbon dioxide and small amounts of alcohol. Accordingly, I would say yeast generating carbon dioxide is a chemical reaction. A common use of this is the rising of bread, an example of physical change caused by gas expansion. Both matchsticks emitted a larger flame when placed over the lit candle because when it comes to oxygen, the match has a secret supply. Stored inside the match head is another chemical called potassium chlorate. When it gets hot, it releases a lot of extra oxygen and heat and of course, oxygen increases the candle flame because oxygen supports the chemical processes that occur during fire. As a physical observation, the matchstick that was dipped in ice water was burning faster across the matchsticks towards my finger, faster than the one dipped in tap water. You see, water itself is not a good conductor. The dissolved ions in the water are responsible for most of the conduction. Water tries to exclude as many ions as possible when freezing, making ice a poor conductor. So basically, yes. Ice is as conductive as water, yet they're still both very poor conductors.